got a uh, BMW X5 E70 today and it's got the N55 3 litre petrol um, turbocharged engine uh, and today we're going to be fixing some oil leaks uh, from the oil filter housing and the, um, the rock cover. So we'll uh, try and take you through the process of us doing this uh, rock cover repair and probably the oil filter housing as well, if not just the rock cover. Uh, so we'll start off, we'll have to do the usual and on these E70s where we pull all the bulkheads or engine partitions out and as you can see they're broken like usual. So we'll get all that out of the way first and then we'll have all the engine covers off and we'll pick up from there. So now we've got those covers all out of the way, we can see a lot more of what we're doing. We have to remove this foam on the back of the head here and we'll remove this crossover pipe and maybe the air box as well um, and we'll have to take the injection lines off the top of the injectors um, and then yeah we should be able to start stripping this uh, rock cover off the car so this pipe will have to come off also and obviously this uh, intake pipe so we've started by undoing these hose clamps so this is a six millimeter this is a seven i don't know if that's how it's meant to be but it looks like a bmw one um there's another six down here that we've undone i've undone this t25 bolt here so this bolt can come out to uh for this charger sorry this for this air intake pipe to come off um i need to take this hose off of the rock cover also and this one here so we'll squeeze the, the two pieces together so we're just squeezing these two tabs top and bottom and that's going to open these sides up hard to show or you can go in with a screwdriver and just lift these two sides gently so we can get that out of the way um, and then we'll start popping all this sort of stuff off and like I say we'll get this uh, breather hose off as well and this uh, this line also so just everything that's going to cause us um, anything, you know, a restriction or something that's got to be out of the way. So this eccentric shaft sensor, we'll get that out of the way. Now because we're going to have the air box off, the uh, wiring harness on these E70s at least pop onto the side of the air box. So we'll just pop those off. And they are just rubber mounts. So they should just pull straight off. I've got one of them out of the way already. Sometimes they're a little bit stubborn. There we go. So that's wiring that way, and we're just popping this off of its rubber mounts. And there we go. So we can completely remove that. I've already unplugged the air mess meter. Just gives us a bit more room and uh, access to our injector pipes etc just start getting things a little bit more out of the way get our foam off at the back this is our plug for that air mass meter that we just unplugged there we go so that foam is now out of the way And this air mass, mass meter plug was just to push down on this tab here which just lifts this tab here so if this is broken or you can't get it off just get a pick or a little screwdriver and just lift this tab here and you'll get it off so i've got the uh intake pipe removed as you can see we've removed this fitting this one off the rock cover a little bit of a pain you've got to sort of lift this and, and lift these tabs at once it's like a four pronged one and they're quite brittle and as you can see it's already been cracked before um, but like I say very brittle so if you can go too hard and it will crack just generally ease it off and we've got this um, two wire um, wiring plug that was plugged on here that we've just unplugged just a pull type one or you, you, can, you can just lift this tab a tiny bit but again just be careful because things get brittle now we're going to get this pipe off the rock cover so we're going to go in with a little screwdriver just try and help it and this is a vacuum uh, chamber inside of here as well so it's a reservoir for the vacuum system so that is obviously going to try and keep this retained in here also so the technique i found was to put a, a small screwdriver and just lift the tabs while holding it with the other hand just to keep it popped and then do the opposite and just slowly work it out 
and then popped out of the vacuum. So that's that out of the way. And we can just put that over to one side. It actually does rotate out of the way quite nicely. So we can just wedge that down there. And then, uh, like I say, we'll just start with these injection lines. We'll have to get the wiring harness off of the uh, top of the rock cover also. So we'll unplug all our coil packs and uh, injectors and stuff just to get it all uh, out of our way. So we've got the wiring harness now just chucked out of the way as you can see so there was one t25 bolt that was bolting it down into the rock cover back here got all of our earth straps off for the injectors which are bolting onto the studs in between each of the cylinders so each pair of two cylinders has one um, earth for the uh, the coils and the injectors um, actually it's just for the coils um, so yeah, they're an 8mm nut, just undo those and you can just get the uh, the wiring harness and popped off and chucked it over the other side so it's completely out of your way. Um, like I say, we've still got to do the injector lines and I've got to take the, um, the, the gasket off around here which just gives us a bit more movement around this wiring plug for the, um, the eccentric shaft. So once that's done, um, we can, I think, just pull these vacuum lines and we might be able to just start ripping all the rock cover bolts at that point so sometimes these hoses will come off nice and easily like this one did and then sometimes there'll be a pain like this one and you'll have to run a slice down it to get it off you're better off slicing the hose and just shortening it about you know eight mil or something than breaking off this barb on the rock cover because then you're going to need uh, a new rock cover basically so because like i said before this is a vacuum chamber this is a reservoir for the vacuum system, hence why all the solenoids and stuff for the turbo control is taking its vacuum source from here. So don't break these off basically, and don't mix the, the tubes up. Now these fuel pipes, they're 14 millimeter unions, uh, so un crack them off, but only just crack them so then you can actually release pressure that's inside the rail. Um, you can take the uh, fuse out for the uh, the fuel pump uh, and run the car until it stops or something along those lines if you want um, uncrack them off put a rag over the union let the pressure release slowly don't let it all billow out but if you just crack a couple of the unions and put a rag around it and wrap it around it so the rag absorbs the fuel you'll be able to release the pressure in the rail and then take these lines off so now there's no there's no pressure remaining in these in these lines because the pressure has now been released so I can take all of these lines off and operate safely. Now also I would suggest you wear face protection, goggles, um, etc. Uh, so any of this fuel doesn't get you in the eye if you do release off too much pressure. So I've got everything out of the way now, the injection lines are off and I've actually started running around and undoing all these E10 bolts. So as you can see, most of them are loose. Now, one thing that is worth noting is this T25 Torx here. This requires removing, and then this weight removing. So I don't know what it's for, it's just a big lump of metal by the looks of it. And there's actually another hidden E10 underneath here. So if you can't get it off, you're probably missing one of the bolts, and that's probably an easy one to miss. So yeah, so all the way around, there's a load of E10s that so just need to be whizzed off. So as we can see the rock cover is now off it was a little bit tricky negotiating it past coming past this pipe here so it had to kind of lift this pipe out of the way and slide across and up um, it may even be better to take the back coil packs out maybe all of them i already have these ones out just for you know i unplugged them and then i just automatically took them out but i think maybe take all six coil packs out will just give you a little bit more room moving forwards obviously we've got to be careful of our uh, um, eccentric shaft wiring plug here as well so this is the rocker cover off and as we can see it looks like someone's used maybe silicon on the gasket which is a big no-no um, and it does look very flat and very hard and worn out so we take a pick yeah it's very brittle and hard this gasket So we'll pull these out and replace them. There is ones around the injector and coil pack recesses. So we'll replace all those and we'll try and get all this silicon out as well because that shouldn't be there. So we do a quick comparison between the original ones. Look how solid these are. 
they're almost becoming like plastic rather than rubber. When it deforms, it's it's you know it's holding its place. You'd almost expect it to crack as well. So that's they're just very rigid and not flexible. They need to be flexible to that to actually seal. And that just feels solid under my thumb now. I've got the new one. It's malleable. It's soft. Flexes and it keeps its shape. And that's what you need it to do. So yeah, ready for the bin. That's all the new gaskets installed in the rock cover and ready to reassemble. Also clean down all the surfaces on the cylinder head so then we actually get a nice seal. Obviously cleanliness is an important thing with any gasket. Um, we don't want oil or grease or grime or anything uh, from you know either the leak before or whatever that's going to be between the seal so we want metal against uh, a nice clean gasket. We've got the rocker cover back sat on the top of the engine. Uh, I've got all the, the bolts spun down and, and just hand tightened at the moment. Um, we're going to tighten those bolts all up to 9 newton meters. What I would highly recommend when you install this is get a mirror like this on a stick and just go around the back, go around all of the gasket. Just take the 5 or 10 minutes to carefully inspect that gasket and make sure it's sat in the groove and that you can just see, you should just be able to see the side of the gasket like flat going along. So I'll grab the old gasket and show you what you would be able to see. So when you look with a mirror, you should just be able to see the side of this section here. If you see that, that means the gasket's folded. So it needs to be, you're just seeing the side because the rest of it is going to be, the rest of this is going to be obscured by the rock cover. So you should only see the small margin of that bottom there. If you go around and look with this, like I said, especially at the back and this back corner here, when you're installing this rock cover, it's very tight at the back here on the E70. So you're trying to get it on and you could catch something on the engine and just roll that gasket or, you know, roll that gasket at the back there. Um, if you catch it, you can then, you can, if you, and you see it, you can then uh, rectify it rather than if you bolt it all back together. Um, and, you know, you don't realise or whatever, you will, you will have a leak. It won't seal basically and you will damage that gasket. Um, so yeah, don't tighten any of the bolts, just get it sat on there and just do a quick visual look around it, just so you're sure. So we're going to tighten these bolts down to 9 newton meters, and then we can start reassembling the rest of the uh, parts we've taken off. So as you can see, we started building up all the wiring harness, uh, the vacuum pipe, and the vacuum pump, and we've got the eccentric shaft um, wiring back on, all the coil packs plugged in, all the earths of the coil packs, the injection lines on, and the unions tightened to 23 newton meters. Got the lambda uh, wiring plugs plugged back in and the bracket bolted back down. Gonna cable tie this back to the injection rails. This set of wires here, because that's how it was from standard. Um, what else have we got? We've got all our solenoid plugs back in. We've got our uh, va vacuum lines for our solenoids, etc. Plumb back in. I've shortened this one that was we had to cut to get off. So that is now gonna be fitting without a split in it. And there's plenty of slacking it to do that um, so yeah we're next probably going to be putting our crossover pipe and intake tube back on um, and attaching all our other lines that we've got off our breather pipes etc and then we can put our airbox back, airbox back on so we're pretty much done and I'll probably leave the video there to be honest um, as that's pretty much um, all the information you guys are going to need for doing an R&R of this um, rocker cover gasket so yeah, um, obviously wash down the engine afterwards. As we can see down here, there is a, a vast amount of oil mist and oil residue that's going to be in, collecting in that heat shield and it will run down the back of the engine and onto the transmission as well. So make sure you wash your engine off afterwards to confirm it's